Hello, 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 everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Come on in, come on in. Wherever you are, wherever you're located, comment down below as we wait on people to come on in. Let's see who we got in the room. It's a Friday um, night, too. Yes, Friday <laughs> night. We're going into Mother's Day weekend. So let's see who's willing to join us tonight for this amazing time and conversation that we're going to have. So let's see, let's see, let's see. How do I get left with a mini-me? How did I get left with a mini-me? Where go? So let's see. All right. So we are live. We are live. We are live. Come on in, you all, as we talk about how to overcome fear as a mother, a parent, a, a, a guardian, whatever you are, uh, how to overcome fear. But before we jump all the way in and we get started, I want you to comment below your city and state. Tell me where you are located, where you are from. Uh, so we know where you're coming on in and welcome, welcome, welcome to all of our first timers. And that's actually interesting because if this is your first time with being with us tonight, I want you to comment below. It's my first time. It's my first time. So that way we can get situated and we can get settled. So let's see who we got in the room as we are coming on in. All right, I see Colleen, Texas, Mississippi, Westland, Mississippi. All right, y'all may meet some of your next door neighbors down below. Uh, Dallas, Texas, the DMV, Oxon Hill, Maryland. Yes, come on in, come on in. Northern California. And if you know another mother, as we're waiting on you all to come on in, because we're not going to really dive in until we hit maybe 150, all right? So if you know another woman, I want you to comment and tag her below if you know another mother. A mother who is struggling, maybe in this area, with overcoming mm. fear for her children as a parent, I want you to just tag her down below and say, check this out, all right? Just tell her to check yeah. this out yeah. so she can be able to see. But... As we're waiting on Ian, Ma, you kick us off. Introduce yourself. What are we doing? I don't know how you gave it to me. This is your life. I'm going to get my battery charger, but you were doing such a great job just welcoming them in. Ariel, we are over 100, but I know that there are mothers all across the globe, and I can honestly say, as a mother, that we have some fears, okay? So yeah. we're not going to come in here with denial. We're not going to come in here like it's perplexing us and it's keeping us in bondage, but we are going to come in here and say, let's acknowledge the truth because the truth shall make me free. And that means yeah. I'm going to go through processes that is going to cause my mind, my heart, my soul to walk at a level of freedom because I'm not going to be in denial. Ariel, we got some things going on in our world. We got some things going on in communities. You know, you just never know because the enemy is roaming rampant. Yeah. He's relentless. He never stops. But at the end of the day, I have to understand who I am. I got to know how to fight. I got to know my spiritual warfare. I got to know the enemy that coming after the seed of the man that caused me to give life. Ain't that amazing? Yeah, I think that's where you, where you alluded to last night. Yeah. Uh, because that was a, a major breakdown. So those who weren't here last night, I want you to just repeat what you just said again. Every sperm has an enemy. <laughs> That's what I said last night. You know what I'm saying? Every sperm, mm -hmm. because that is seed. I'm looking at you, Ariel, as my daughter, uh, and you are your father's seed. You know what I'm saying? And I recognize that there is an enemy that wants to snatch you, your mind, your life, your heart, your soul, but he can't, he can't, he can't win because because I'm here. The mother is here. Mm -hmm. The mother is here. Yeah. And that's why we're celebrating. So I'm well, that's celebrating something Mother's right Day. now. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you are a mother and you're listening and you are right here, I want you all to comment down below. The mother is here. All right. Whether yeah. you understand fully what she's talking about or not, you are proclaiming as a mother that you are here that mm -hmm. you understand or maybe you don't understand or you're going to get some understanding about how the enemy is after your seed, um, well, after your child, right, who is a seed, who comes from the sperm of man, 
Yeah. Yes. And yeah. you are here. All right. So if you are here, I come see it. I love. see it. I see Renee said the mother is here. Laura, Michelle, Sandra, the mother is here. Saleya, the mother is here. Come on now. And Ariel, you yes. know what? I just let me let me just share with you all, you know, as they really continuously uh get to know us, you know what I'm saying? Uh, for who we are in the kingdom of God and why God has given us such a responsibility. But we have to really understand that God, I can't even imagine what was on his mind when my mother conceived me. <laughs> yeah. I, can't even, yeah. I can't even imagine. I, I can't imagine what he had in mind. I'm talking about God. I'm talking about the omnipotent one. I'm talking about the omniscient one. I'm talking about the one who said, let there be. And there is now day and night, stars in the sky, moon in the sky. We're walking the earth. He said, let there be. You know what I'm saying? Then he said, let us make man. And, and out of all that, we're here. So at the end of the day, what did he have in mind when he caused your mother to conceive? What did he have in mind when he caused me to conceive you, Ariel? What did he have? Have you ever thought about that? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just noticed that. I was wondering, like, why is Christina doing weird faces? And I noticed she's doing every face that I, <laughs> you know that I was doing. Yeah, I was like, hmm, hmm. And then, like, I saw her facial reaction doing the same thing. But no, that, that is true. Like, what did the enemy have? in mind you know and i think that we really all need to first off i want that to be the first thing that you really meditate on you know today as you're listening to this live tonight the mind that the enemy is trying to prevent oh, yeah, 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 yeah. now the enemy don't yes. know but he knows yeah. who our creator is now that he does know yeah matter of fact he got a better relationship with him than you do because at yeah. the end of the day Satan was created by God. Yeah. He was a terrible. So the question is, what did God have in mind? The question. Yes. yes. What did yes. God have in mind? And now, we, and, now and, and, and even before I go to you, what did God have in mind for as, as I conceived you? But what did God have in mind when he conceived me for you? Hmm. Hmm. And I just believe that it's bigger than washing clothes, going to work, feeding you, giving you things, running you here and there, school, ballet, da 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 all these things to try to keep you safe. When at the end of the day, I got to pursue a higher purpose because the fear is really underlying. Now that is, okay. That's a thought provoking question it is. for everyone, whether you are a mother watching this or not, because that question even made me have to think about me as a soon to be mother one day that yeah. what did God have in mind when I was conceived for my children that's to come. That is a whole nother different ball game. And if, if a lot of single young women really thought like that, correct, we wouldn't. I don't think any woman would be just popping out a whole bunch of <laughs> kids. But, but the thing is, is that every life is ordained. Every yes. life. I don't so care if it was a one be, night stand. I yeah. don't care if it was you divorced. I don't care if it happened in the back seat of the car. You know, no matter how, when, and what, and wh who. That life is ordained. And I know, Ariel, that your father was the first man that I was with. But he yeah. chose that seed. He chose yeah. that sperm. He chose that to come forth. And I got to know how to fight. Yeah. And as I said, well, I, don't, I don't think we would just be popping out just, just because. It would be no. with, you know, knowing an intention, knowing a reason behind it. But before we dive into tonight's topic, um, I don't think we introduced myself, yeah, yeah, yeah. introduce myself when we got to 150. <laughs> but for those who do not know who we are, right? <laughs> I'm like looking at this. <laughs> those who do not know who we are. Uh, I'm Ariel. This is my mom, Pastor D. Uh, we are the co-owners of uh, Black and Married with Kids and Dunamis Woman Enterprise. 
Uh, and so wherever it is that you are streaming and you are watching this, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, but this is going to be an opportune time as we're bringing uh, both of our communities together to really empower mothers, empower women um, who are going through. As Mother's Day is coming up, uh, we decided to really do something in honors of, of mothers for as we close out this powerful mm -hmm. month. And we have some amazing surprises coming up. Yes. So for the rest of this week, all right, I'm just giving you all the schedule. Last night, you talked about the fight for my legacy. And for the rest of this week, we are going to really be addressing the four big things that uh, mm -hmm. grip a woman's heart when she is fearful, mm -hmm. when, when the enemy is really coming after her children, when mm -hmm. her children are going through struggles. And so those who saw the video, I sent out a video. And if you haven't watched it, uh, maybe I'll text it out again. So make sure you text us at 404-737-0580. Yeah. I'll probably text out tomorrow. But these four things that we're addressing is one, mothers get gripped with fear. Yeah. When the enemy is attacking their children mm -hmm. or they're going through life, uh, mm -hmm. we get gripped with frustration. I'm saying we like I'm a <laughs> y'all, right? Uh, the second thing you said was frustration. Mm -hmm. The third thing you said was uh, feeling like a failure, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and lack of forgiveness. And yeah. all week, we're going to be addressing these things and empowering you and how to stand in faith uh, as a mother. So tonight, we're talking about mm -hmm. how to overcome the fear, all right? The how to overcome the fear. fear. And so yeah. you're going to be with us all week, all right? Leading up to this, I want you to come below. I'm going to be with y'all. I'm going to be with y'all. I'm going to be with y'all. All right. Yes, yes. Because we're going to really hit it hard for mothers and honors of Mother's Day. I know we're going to honor you all, but I do think that mothers are silently dealing with a lot of these things. And although Mother's Day is such a rejoicing time, um, I'm just speaking from what I can perceive that for some mothers out here, it could also be a time of I don't want to say heavy grievance, but grievance when you really are gripped with heaviness in your heart for your children. And, um, and, and, and many of us, all of us probably don't even know uh, what all of that entailed when we conceived. Uh, none of us really knew. I know I didn't. Let me just speak for myself. But Ariel, I just firmly believe that everyone is a mother, including yourself, whether you have given birth or not. Giving birth doesn't make you a mother because there's a lot of women who have given birth and doesn't take that occupancy. But the ability to have a womb and the ability to know how to spiritually fight based upon that womb and that hollow place, someone take occupancy in your heart. So like Christina, she is your niece. This baby right here that's, that's mimicking you. You know what I'm saying? She is your niece. And let me ask you this question. Is there some type of fear based upon the future that you may have, which is why you guide and play the best TT there is in her life. Yeah, that's why I really, you know, when we do stuff for like, how we're doing stuff specifically for mothers, I think I was saying earlier before we even came on, you know, a lot of women, young women or women in general um, will say, well, I'm not a mother, so this isn't a part of me. Mm -hmm. And I beg to differ because like you said, every woman has a mothering within her. Correct. Whether Correct. I've actually physically birthed a child Correct. or not, there's a mothering Correct. instinct that is within me. And so when I think about legacy, when I think about Christina, when I think about, you know, Genesis, which is my nieces, yeah, I'm auntie, I'm Titi, but then there's still a, but that part of me that wants to, that has fear for her, mm -hmm. that part of me that wants to protect her is that mothering part of me, right? Now, am I her natural physical mm -hmm. mother? No, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, when I look at her, I am fearful in some areas, right? There are some things that come up. And I think that when we always think so black or white, mm -hmm. that's, that's one way that we really mm -hmm. stay ignorant to certain things that are happening within our heart, our mind, mm -hmm. our soul, in the, in the kingdom, because we always think so black or white. Well, I ain't married, so it don't apply to me. Well, I'm not yeah. a mother, so it don't apply yeah. to me. Yeah. Well, I'm not yeah. an aunt, so it don't apply to me. Yeah. Well, I'm not yeah. a sister. I'm like, what? Yeah, when yeah, the nation yeah. that you may be called yeah. to is going to be a plethora of people. So it's like, don't count. If y'all agree with me, just say, don't count yourself out. 
Don't count yourself yeah. out. Because yeah. there are yeah. women listening to this right now who are not mothers, and I commend you. And, 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 and I could honestly say before we go into the topic of tonight of how to overcome the mother's fear, Ariel, God is looking for wombs, W-O-M-B-S, wombs. Mm -hmm. You have a womb. If you were born female, you have a womb. And that womb can always feel the heart of another child. If you are a teacher, that means you're occupying a space of a mother in that classroom. If you're mm -hmm. a daycare provider, you're operating in the space of a mother in the classroom. If you are yeah. in the grocery store and you see a child in harm's way, you want to step in and say, wait a minute, baby, where's your mother? Or don't hurt yourself because you're stepping in the occupancy of a mother. Does that make sense? And like you said, we can't be black and white. And as I talked about last night, we it takes a village. And I think the breakdown of our children, rather no matter how old they are, is that they are, we are all taking occupancy as a village, as a spiritual mother. I have spiritual daughters who are chronologically older than me, but just because foundations wasn't laid, I'm still standing in the gap with their mother. Yeah. Deceased or alive. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't make anyone good or bad. At the end of the day, we can't do this alone. What I can do naturally, somebody can come do spiritually to occupy that place that you needed in your heart and your soul spiritually. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Teach me. And I think that this is what all of us are saying. Teach me. If you all are saying that with your own self, teach me, oh Lord, teach me. Yeah. You know, David said it in Psalms 119. Teach me, teach me your ways. Teach me your statue. Teach me how to war. Teach me how to fight. Teach me how to stand in the gap. Teach me how to pray. Teach me. And I think that's a cry all the time for everybody. Teach me. Teach me how to be an auntie. Teach me how to be a, 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 a woman. Well, whoever that is and whatever that it looks like for your life, teach me, Lord. So, yeah. I think that's the first step of what we all have to come to grips with. You know what I'm saying? Because even when I birth children, don't mean I know what I'm doing. No, and that's not, and that's not a time when I want. I mean, I'm gonna <laughs> learn, but that ain't the time that I want to be taught. <laughs> I want to be taught before, as much as I can beforehand. Mm -hmm. Then you know, going in. So uh, that's what I said. I commend anyone in our community that is having that understanding of, of, of teach me and that desire to be taught, you know, regardless. And so tonight you have something for how to overcome fear, you know, so I, my fear that I have had has probably never amount, has not amounted close to the fears that you have had as a mother. So uh, where do you want to go with this one? Uh, where do you want to, where you want me to go? T t t tell me what you want to know from me at this point, as far as fear. Let me, let me Ooh, let I, you I, did, I thought you said you had a, uh, 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 right get there, but you wanna, but one thing that I wanted to, to know, uh, what I thought of, I was like, I wonder <laughs> if she had any, you always talk about the fears that you have for Allison because she like the, 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 the rebel child, but I was like, I wonder if you had any fears for me when I was a child, like, and I don't say Alison was a rubber child, but you always talk about your fears with her. But I'm like, have you ever had a, like a real strong grip with fear when it comes to myself? I don't know. I was yeah. curious. I want to know. Yeah. Well, because you are, um, both of you all are gifted in your own way. Both of you all are intelligent, but you are more like myself in ways of being headstrong. You are like myself in ways of being stubborn. Uh, you know how to step in and just whoo, just do what you want to do, how you want to do it. The biggest part of fear as a mother is that we see ourselves in our children. So the fear is that me seeing myself in you and saying, man, does she got to go down the same path? Man, does she have to end, have to encounter the same pain? That fear is still prevalent now, which makes me want to fight. You know what I'm saying? Because I've mm -hmm. been in places where I don't want you to experience that same thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't want your life to take a major turn at 50 years old like mine did. So the the the, the humility is what I fight for. God humble her. 
God, teach her your ways, teach her your statutes, because I, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know who said that about me, but I see myself in you. And sometimes when we can be so gifted and 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 I was entrepreneurial, business, never had a job, you know, just a go-getter, feisty. I see that in you. But God had something for me that shifted my life. You know, he didn't punish me, but I see the fact, Ariel, but I also had to go through some pain. I don't know who you're going to attract as a, in a man. I don't know what you're going to attract in a man. I don't know what's going to come up. You know what I'm saying? And when you have your own husband and your own children. But I do know, God, does she have to go through some things that I went through? Is she going to have to face some of the stuff that I had to face to cause me to have the anointing that I have, to cause me to see demon trembles the way that I see them, to cause me to cast out devils when I say, you're going to come out, you come out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what? not a, that you just look at that. So that's not a fear like, ooh, I'm scared. But in a sense, you know, I am because I knew what pain it took. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. and, and, and life is never yeah. going to be hunky-dory. Nobody. And yeah. so we all got to come out of denial that you see yourself in your children. If you really tune with yourself, you see that stubbornness. You see those ways that you have. You know what you did with your mama. You know how you lied to your mama. You know what you did undercover. So at the end of the day, Things don't get away from us. Does that make sense? Yeah, and you talked about that in the video about facing the reality, but you also mentioned, you know, how sometimes we're gripped with fear because it would it would now put more responsibility on you as a mother. Um, such as like, you know, like you were saying, if 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 Alice were to pass away, who would take care of the grandchildren, right? <laughs> or um, if something were to happen. It you're really fearful because of the greater responsibility that you would have to take on um, as a mother. So speak to that a little bit. It's not only just with children, you know, I, you know, I'm the type of person and I learned this, you know, from uh, hearing the late Dr. Miles Monroe, but it's fair. And I, I thought I was crazy when I heard it, but he really confirmed it. He said, you always expect the best and you prepare for the worst. Mm -hmm. So, I don't, you don't have to have children for me to want to raise them. I, you know, Ariel, I, I, I expect the best for your life, but God, what if she leave this earth before me? So I, this may be too heavy for some people who live, you know, but I've already thought about your funeral. Mm -hmm. Not saying you're going to die. We right. all going to die. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not expecting you to die you know, anytime soon, but you never know mothers have lost their children. Yeah. And so I can, I can, I, I don't never think that I'm better than, I don't never think that something can't come my way. I don't never think that life will take a turn. This is what I'm saying. So I have to prepare myself and don't let fear grip my heart, but me grip fear. And I think oftentimes we don't prepare for things and the fear and the sting of fear that the enemy has caused to keep us stuck, depressed and grieve. It, it captures us when when I am a person, as I know who I am in Christ, I'm not going to let fear grip me. I'm going to grip fear because the reality of it is life can shift for all of us. And what is the worst that could ever happen is that you leave this earth and I got to bury you. So just as well as you was born, I already look at you if, if you got to die. I rejoice when you was born and I got to look at you if, if, if you leave this earth before me. How am I going to handle this? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And I don't, so, think mothers, I don't think mothers go around thinking about that, but I'm talking about me. And I don't, I don't go, yeah. are we all going to die? But life can easily take a turn for all of us even yourself for me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like someone had come below, they lost their son when he was 14, you know, years old. And I think someone else had comment, you know, how do you really deal with the cries and the tears at night, you know, as it relates to your, your child. And, you know, for those circumstances, which I'm sorry to hear about those circumstances, you know, I, I really want to, Think about how can we, two things, one, not 
shift our mind so that fear doesn't take a grip on us, right? When it does take place. Um, because like for you, you already said, okay, well, I've already planned your uh, departure from this earth, even though it hasn't even happened yet. Now that doesn't mean that you're not gonna feel the hurt, the pain, the emotions, whatever the case may be, but you put yourself in a mind, in a position that although you say, you always say, I'm going to outlive you and um, Allison, right? I'm going to live. I don't ever want you all to bury me. But at the end of the day, you still prepared your mindset to say, if that was not to happen, what would this be? Instead of worrying with fear, you know, constantly about, okay, what is going to happen? What's going to happen? When's it going to happen? So you already shifted your mind so that you're not gripped with that fear, but more mm-hmm. so you are operating in faith and a good and and fortitude to say this is where i'm going to be if in the case of this ever happened does that make sense correct and 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 when i think about it i don't think about it to to prepare for it i think about it because i want to feel the agony now Mm -hmm. so when it you know when it does if, if that was to happen the agony won't take me down the agony I can stand mm-hmm. up in it now, not to rejoice and not to just feel, to not to dismiss the pain, but to not let the agony. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. a lot of times fear, we are experiencing the agony of fear. Fear brings torment. Fear brings agony. So mm-hmm. how do I grip fear? I, 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 I let myself feel the agony before it happens. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and most, most, most people don't think that way because they don't want to feel that agony, you know, and I think the enemy blindsides us. But the principle of life is that we were all born to die. Yeah. Who, who lives forever? And and who knows their expiration date? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't know my expiration date. I don't know yours. I don't know anybody's. Does that make sense? I don't even know when Jesus is going to return. So certain things you just ain't to know. Yeah. So what about the mothers who are on here and the agony has already hit them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The passing or whether the child is gone out the home, maybe he's still living or he or she is still living. We don't know where they are. It could be so many different things that can cause fear. So when you're already in the midst of the agony, you know what I'm saying? Um, and you're already feeling the agony because you, your mind wasn't shift before the disruption or whatever took place or your child going down a path that you never thought it caught you completely off guard. You know, how do you, how do you break through that agony and the the fears of what's playing in your head about yourself or what's to come or have another child? I mean, there's so much different stuff that could take place. And, 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 and like someone is saying, they feel the agony now, uh, Mm -hmm. but, this is just, this is my life. Okay. Uh, and I pray that it encourages someone is that I know that no matter what, he is my creator. He is my Lord. He is, he is my heavenly father. You see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, my worship, I take my pain and worship. I don't sit and sulk in it. You know, I've lost my mother. You know what I mean? Uh, but I, you know, when I, I didn't feel the agony because it, I already knew, hell, I'm not selfish to hold on to her. I'm not selfish. Everybody's going to leave here. I just have a different mindset. So even in the loss of it, I still take what I feel in worship. God, I know that you're real. I know that you're the author and the finisher of my faith. I know that you are the giver of life. I know that you are the one who has the birth date and the expiration date. So I yield myself to you. I'm not God. And my mother was not God. And I'm not putting her in a place of God. And I don't want you to put yourself, my, me in the place of your God. Take it to our God and worship him for what I experienced. And, and, and what I do now is look at the days that, that I did have and what she put inside of me. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And I think that goes back to the original question that we at, that you had mm-hmm. proposed before we even started was, what did God have in mind when we were conceived? Because yeah. I think that we put so much, we put so much agony into another life instead mm-hmm. of putting actually admiration and appreciation for our life 
because we lose our life for other people. But really, when we take a step back and really think about what did God have in mind when I was conceived, although I may be a sister at a certain moment, although I may be a mother at a certain period of time, although I may be an aunt at a certain period of time, but as, when I have in my mind and I seek out to God, what did you have in mind when I was conceived? Thanking him for the opportunity in the space that he allowed me to have in these roles. But that's not my whole life. And the <laughs> agony, I think, immediately takes you out of the admiration for your own life of what's to live. You know, I, I think about when we think about the, you know, um, the five uh, young black men who were mm -hmm. put in prison because mm -hmm. of a crime that they didn't commit. Correct. And the inaugurated five and how many mothers couldn't even watch that film on Netflix because yeah. it just gripped them with so much fear. Yeah. But when I yeah. think about how they portrayed those mothers and how some of those mothers stood mm -hmm. on behalf of their sons being in prison for a crime that they know they didn't commit, but it was some of them still stood in, in the power and the purpose of their life. Although they were still fighting for their son's life, but it was like, I got, I got something to fight for. I have something that I can bring to the table. I have, now it wasn't all of them, but mm -hmm. the very few was like, I'm going to actually use my voice, use my message, use who I am. And so I think that, you know, we have to really think about that fight that we have, like you talked about the fight for your legacy, mm -hmm. whether you, mm -hmm. they're still here or not, you still mm -hmm. represent the fight. Yeah, you do. And you have to fight because, Ariel, I believe this is if we have over 200 something women I believe that's watching. It may be some men. I don't know. But regardless of it, I believe that God had in mind for all of us that are watching, including myself, that he want us on this earth as agents of change. Yeah. And as agents of change. We birth powerful sons and daughters. You are an agent of change. And people who are agents of change have to go through some hell. Agents of change has to feel what other people feel in order for change to occur. Now, we don't have to know what to do with it because typically nobody's not teaching us about how to be an agent of change. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So even for myself, Knowing that I'm an agent of change, you are an agent of change, this granddaughter is an agent of change, I have to prepare myself for whatever's going to come that way because change ain't easy. And as an agent of change, you got to go through hell for change to occur. So yeah. now I am going to now say, fear, you're not going to grip my heart. Yeah. I don't know who's going to come, but I know who I am. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the key. And I want all of you all, if I can ever encourage you tonight to say, I don't know what's going to come, but I know who I am. And we're for, we are been we have been conditioned to look at what and not who. What has happened? What has taken place? What is going on? What is this? What is that? And I don't really think about who I am. What breeds fear? Who breeds faith. Mm, mm. And that's why we're here. That's why I'm here. And I know that God did not just make me a mother to say, oh, I raised you all. Tulu, you got a wonderful degree. You got a job. I'm not dismissing that. But there's more because we're living in perilous times. Yeah. Yeah. So if God wanted you born in 1960, Ariel, you would have came through another womb at that time. You could have been my mother. Have you ever thought about that? Now you try to act like you're my damn mama. But at the end of the day, if he wanted you born in 1960, you could have been my mother and I could have been your daughter. But he said, no, this is how I want it. What if we all were born in 1960, but we came back as a different form and a human being? What would you? What if you was born in 1700, 1800, and you came back? You see what I'm saying? Because yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? I believe that I carry the spirit of my ancestors. I don't know yeah, how far that's what back. I'm saying, like, what if we were? What if? A, what if a part of us was, and we still carry the spirit of that now? I see the spirit of my mother in her. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You see her feistiness. I, but God chose her for such a time as this. That's why I can't let fear grip my heart. I have to help Allison. I can't train her, but I help Allison train her and develop her as the prophetess, like Angie said, prophetess of uh, her. I, she was born looking around. She, when she was born, her, her head was up and she was looking around. The Holy Spirit wants me to see Mm -hmm. So I can know how to be the grand, not the mother, but the grand. Does that make sense? That means mm -hmm. I got some experience. I got some wisdom. I got some knowledge that I got to keep bestowing on generations to come. And that's what my fight is about. Because the, the, what we was fighting back then, it, 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 we ain't fighting the same demons now. Them some, okay. them some vicious ones. They bold. These, these, these bastards are bold. <laughs> so, so how do we overcome you know the the fear and your own because we got a lot of things coming up mm -hmm. you know uh we got a huge surprise for mother's day and yeah. i'm gonna tell you all how y'all can find out about this surprise on mother's day um uh, because we're not just doing this for no reason we got something huge for many mothers yeah. to participate in um so i'm a should i tell y'all now how to how to get notified of the surprise or maybe i should wait to the end i don't know i may tell y'all now just be a little comment because by the time we, we talk about this acronym, it's going to be time to jump on off of here because tonight is Friday night and I know that people are ready to get, get, get in that bed. So let's go. Tell them how to get a notification. Okay. If you want to know the surprise, all right, that we're going to text out on Mother's Day, all right, it's going to be the best gift that we have for you all for Mother's Day. Not tangible. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, it's going to be the best gift. Um, so I want you to text the mm -hmm. word surprise, all right? Mm -hmm. Text the word surprise to 404-737-0580. That's 404-737-0580, all right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to be notified, Renee said, ooh, I love gifts. This is gonna be an awesome gift, <laughs> an awesome, awesome gift, right? So text the word surprise mm -hmm. to 404-737-0580. Don't forget to do it, text it now. Yes. And you'll be notified on Mother's Day what the big surprise is. All right. So make sure you all do that. Um, but then we're going to go back. I'll, I'll remind you all again if we have some people pop on afterwards. Um, but, okay, what's this acronym? Because I'm, I'm curious. Well, it's, it's, it's really fear. You know, I love, you know, I love words, Ariel. So I just take mm -hmm. the word fear. Since we are teaching mothers how to overcome fear, I just took the word and I, I, I really went deep into my own heart, my own mind. And I really reflected, you know, seeing that you are 33, Allison 35. You know, I know mothers yeah. are here with older children, but at the end of the day, a mother is a mother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I took the acronym and I just looked at my life. You know what I'm saying? And the more that I fight, which is the F, the more my mind becomes fortified. Hmm. You know, I'm not going to quit. You know, I'm, I I never get comfortable. I know I don't quit. I, I can't say, oh, wow, she's she's on her own now. Let me go somewhere and sit down. No, I recognize that the enemy is relentless and I'm going to stay relentless. He don't quit and I ain't going to quit. And now that I'm a grand, I have to even become more fortified so because, you, keep going, because there's some things that 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 has to be passed down and taught even the more. So are you saying that when we're gripped with fear, that is literally just a, an awakening of the fight and the warrior within us? It's almost like waking you up to say, hey, I need your inner fight to come out now. I need your inner, yeah. I need your inner warrior to come out now. And yeah. instead of giving room and energy to the fear, we really need to be looking at how that flame of that fight has now been sparked yes, to say, yes. hey, God, show me what I need to do. Show me how yes. I need to fight. Yes. Show me what I yes. need to, how do yes. I need to position? It yes. like awakens you, but see, if you don't understand that, if you don't see, cause what fear does is it makes it be like a big bush and fire. Yeah, and fear makes you back up. See, it wants you and, to back up. And when up. that big bush and fire, when yes. that fire, oh, you go, whoo, whoo, right? <laughs> yes. Then, when, but if you really notice, the fire is going to come down at some point and it's going to be that little flame. And then you're yeah. going to lean in and be like, what happened here? And yeah. oftentimes we we run from the fear instead of recognizing that it was a little flame 
yeah. that actually lit that whole thing in, in our soul yeah. and our heart and our yeah. mind that's uh -huh. saying i gotta fight i gotta actually now be fortified because right. this fear came to awaken me in some area yes yeah and you gotta lean into the burn you know just like i'm you know i work out with uh uh, mm -hmm. uh, your cousin, and he's a MMA. You know what I'm saying? But he's teaching me professional boxing. But it ain't the boxing; it's my mind. And one thing he always tell me, he said, "You go, you lean into the burn." He said, "Don't you when when that burn is there, you go in." Most people, that's when they let up. So the enemy wants your mind to weaken. Mm -hmm. When you feel the fear, when you feel the burn, you feel the adversary, and you better lean in. You know what I'm saying? Fortify your mind. Fortify your mind. I'm standing. And you ain't gonna have my legacy. Now I can't do nothing for, yeah. for Angie. I can't, I really realistically, seriously. I can't do anything for any other mother. I can't do anything. I can stand with her. Yes, I can. I could fight with you, but literally, you have been assigned that legacy that you gotta fight. Bottom line. Right, right. And I don't think, I don't think, I'm speaking from a pastor standpoint, but I'm also speaking from a mother standpoint. I don't believe that no pastor can pray and fight better than me as a mother. And that even includes myself. So don't come yeah. over and pray for me, pray for me. No, you learn how to fight. Because when you can't call nobody, you better know I'm here to equip you. I'm here to teach you. Don't, don't depend on me. Let me teach you so you can depend on yourself and God for your own legacy. So everybody mm. got to have a trainer. Everybody got to have a coach. Everybody got to have a fight. Okay, so what's the E? The E is when I look at you all and I look at your idiosyncrasies, your lies, the things that you do undercover, I look at myself and I say, Devada, you are the evidence of somebody else's faith. So if somebody wasn't fighting for me, you know how the old folks say, somebody pray for me. They weren't just praying, they was fighting in the spirit. So I'm the evidence. Ariel, if God can keep me, he can keep you. That overcomes fear. When you all mm. walk up the door or when, when, when y'all go party and be with this guy and you the main one, don't tell nobody where you're going. Don't tell nobody where you are. You grown. I ain't got to tell nobody. You got your nice little condo. You think you the it. You know what I'm saying? And nobody don't know what's hey, going on. I haven't done anything in this condo besides eat some pizza, which I need it to get tonight. Matter. It don't matter. But at the end of the day, I had a condo too and I was living by myself beautiful with my braids in your head at that point in age too. But if God kept me, he can keep you. And I'm telling this to every mother, look at your life. You are the evidence. You are the evidence mm. of somebody else's fight. You're the evidence. And if he can keep you with all your yeah. idiosyncrasies, with all your indiscretions, with all your shortcomings, with all your bull crap, he can keep your legacy. You just got to face the truth. And stop acting like you all this and all that because now you don't grew out of it. Mm. I'm the evidence. And if he can keep me, Ariel, mm. he can keep you. Because you can't do nothing better than I did already. Yeah, yeah, that's well, true. Well, you may be a couple of things. Y'all young folks got some stuff going on. Y'all need to teach me a little something, something about some stuff. <laughs> you know, and then the A, Ariel, we have to learn as mothers to overcome fear, how to be righteously. I don't know what you're talking. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, we got to become angry. Angry at the devil. Mm. Angry at an enemy. Angry. I'm not angry with you. I'm not angry with your father. I'm not angry with nobody. I'm angry at the enemy. Hmm. Hmm. And that you, anger, that righteous anger should lead you to a righteous agony because the agony that oftentimes we experience is really a uh, something that's really depressing and, mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and it's putting us in a deeper place. But there is what I call, what, and I'm, I'm kind of making it up like a righteous agony, but it's an agony 
to cry out to God in your anger, but it's not an agony that's like, oh, I'm defeated. But it's, I mean, when I think about how Jesus even had agony, you know what I'm saying? Like it was still an agony that was still, how do I want to say? It was bestowing unto to, to God. Uh-huh. What were you saying? Yeah, but, but, you, but you all, but as a mother, you really have to understand how your anger is channeled. Let me use you for, for yes. instance. Ariel, you and Allison, you all are beautiful young women. And I know my fight to get you all where you are thus far, and I will continue to fight. But the enemy in this era of time will want you all to remain home alone without a covering, without a great man, and where you are just uncovered. That's not God's will. Not to say you got to be married, but at the yeah. end of the day, God made man and woman. And too many of us out here as women are uncovered. We don't, we just got to be by ourselves. We got toys. We got dildos. We got all stuff. That, I'm not settling for that. Now, I might not have been loved at your age the way that I require, but I'd be doggone if you're going to do like me. You're going to do greater. So my anger is saying, devil, you a liar. I don't care if God got to put another man to the dust, turn him around and make him just for you all. You all shall experience greater than what I've ever experienced. You, you, you see how the yeah. anger is? That's a righteous anger. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we got to put a man back to sleep and do a miracle in him. But you shall be loved. You shall not be divorced. You shall live according to his word. You shall reap the benefits of my sacrifice. Now, that's my yeah. fight. Yeah. I, ain't trying, I ain't trying to fight for you, no house or no car. You shall experience what I haven't experienced. I don't care if I don't never experience it at this point, but you shall experience it and your children shall now do greater and greater and greater and you shall not experience divorce. You will never be in the pain that I was in. You're going to have your own pain, but you ain't going to take mine. Yeah. That's my anger. That's my righteous anger. Yeah. I'm not satisfied. I don't care. You can have five condos. You can go get your braids every week. You can have your own bank account. But I know the order. I know what God did according to his word. And I want to see his word manifest in your life. Yeah. You got that? Now, I don't know what other, any other mother believe because you may be satisfied. But at the end of the day, I ain't never satisfied until I see his word manifest. Yeah. And I don't so, want you to get some fluky nigga because you just got him. He shall be a man who knows your heart. Yeah. So in closing, what is the R? And for those who still need the number for the surprise um, that we're going to announce on Mother's Day, I want you to text surprise to 404-737-0580. I'm actually trying to put it up here, but text that number and the text the word surprise to that number. And we're going to tell you all what's the big surprise that we have for Mother's Day. But uh, yeah. what's the R? The R is every mother needs a revival. Mm. A revival is not where you just go to church and, so, and you run around and you shout and somebody put some oil on you and the matters of your life and your home has not changed. I'm talking about a revival, Ariel, that's going to cause you to be strengthened. A revival that's going to that's going to cause you to improve in your strength. Improve in your strength so you can continue to fight. Improve because guess what? This is a fight. And there's no fight that you're going to ever have that you ain't going to get hit. Yeah. Man, that's just not realistic. You see what I'm no. saying? The whole goal is to get hit. You know what I'm saying? So I can understand how to fight. But at the end of the day, them hit took some strength out of me. So the revival is that I need to get some more strength. I need to enhance my own strength and what God has put inside of me. I need some improvements, some enhancements, some revival. Now, how many of you all in here can openly be honest and say, I need a revival? Mm. I need mm. a revival. I need a revival. These, these grown kids, do you know grown kids can wear you out more than young kids? This baby ain't wearing me out. This baby, I tell her, go sit down. I, I run her. 
But these grown kids wear you out because they think they know what they're doing. They go out here, they get in all kind of stuff. They couple up with these demons. They think they know what they're doing. And then they want to come and bring you some problems. You need a revival. Because hmm. realistically, you go to bed worrying and wondering what the hell is going on. And, and they need a change because they ain't listening. They ain't listening. The older they get, the more they think they know. And then they try to tell you. I'm talking about you too. I need a revival. Everybody yeah. said I need a revival. Yeah, I'm looking at the comments. They said, I need a revival. I need a revival. I need a revival. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, <clears throat> honestly, <clears throat> uh, with that being said, you know, the surprise is going to be huge. I think the surprise is going to culminate a lot of the things that we just talked about tonight. Um, yeah. It's showing you how to be fortified, how yeah. to really be angry at the enemy, how to really understand the evidence of your faith, you know, and knowing that you are the evidence of your faith and mm -hmm. really bring that revival. Um, yeah. forth. So I don't want you all to sleep on this. All right. I pray that tonight has really blessed you, but know mm -hmm. that we're going to continue this. This is not going to be the end tomorrow. We're coming back to talk mm -hmm. about, uh, I can't remember. What's tomorrow's topic? I think we're talking about overcoming frustration. Frustration. Yeah, I think we're yeah. talking about frustration tomorrow. So if you guys are going to be with us tomorrow night at 8 o'clock as we talk about frustration, uh, make sure you're here because, like I said, we got a major, major surprise, and we're going yeah. super hard uh, for these next four days as we're really bringing this to light in honor of Mother's Day. So mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you are prepared and ready for that. But I think there's so much takeaways that we really could even have from tonight. So Almost if y'all got some takeaways from tonight, just imagine what the surprise is going to be, okay? Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. imagine yeah. what the surprise is going to be. So let, do me a favor, all right? If you got something from tonight, if you really, really said this, bless my soul as a woman, I want you to share this on your Facebook page. I want you to share this with another mother. I want you to share this. Do not let your own self receive this. Just hit the share button right now. If you are on our, you know, Black American Kids Facebook page or or, or Dunamis Woman Enterprise Facebook page, and share it. All right, just share it with another sister and let them know that they need to be able to hear them. Or you could just tag them down below if you can think of their name right now, because I think there's so many people that need to really hear this. Because like like we said earlier, we're really gripped with fear for a lot yeah. of different things, and our mind really have to be shipped in a whole other different area. Um, to overcome because the reality is the world is not going to get any it, it's not going to light lesson on us anymore yeah. it's not going to yeah. lighten up yeah. the enemy yeah. is not going to lighten up yeah. I know yeah. we say hey take it all yeah. away yeah. but the reality is the way this world is going it ain't getting no better and well, either, either yeah. we're going to get knocked out or we're going to have to stand up yeah. and, I, and I'm grateful there's, there's many uh, leaders, there's many instructors, there's many pastors, there's many mothers, there's many, a whole lot of everything. But I can only speak for me, Aria. I'm grateful that I've been having to fight and experience the pain, insurmountable pain, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, rejection, uh, uh, all those things that has caused me to be the spiritual warrior that I am. And, and you all are the evidence of my warfare. You know what I'm saying? You all the evidence and whatever you did and got into, it taught me how to fight. And so I don't want to just sit here and just say, oh, I'm fighting. I want all of us to fight. You know, just like I need a trainer. Naturally, we, we need a trainer spiritually. I go in that gym. I, I follow instructions and I train. And although it hurts and, and my body is an aching, you know what I'm saying? We need that spiritually as well. When you spiritually fight, it don't feel good all the time. But this is why we need a revival. So this is my occupancy in the earth uh, as a mother, as a leader. And I'm honored to be able to be with women who have like minds. You know, mm -hmm. unfortunately, everybody don't want to fight. And that's just real talk. No, yeah, that's the yeah. That's real, yeah. real. Yeah. They, they feel like God owes them something. You know, so thank you for joining me, Ariel. And I look forward to seeing all of you all tomorrow night. It's going to be wonderful. I'm looking forward to being back with you. And let's get rid of some of these frustrations because look, it's some revelation about the frustration and I'm going to share it with you. Okay? Yes.
So we're going to see you all tonight. Enjoy your Mother's Day weekend as it begins. All right. Do something for yourself tomorrow and on Sunday. And we're going to see you all tomorrow, tomorrow night. Don't forget to share this with a friend. And don't forget to text 404-737-0580 if you want to be notified about the surprise. Don't say we didn't tell you because we're telling you now. So make sure you text or write down your number or repeat it in your head as many times as you can and so you can get off of here and you could actually text surprise, all right? So we love you all. Have a good rest of your evening and see you tomorrow. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>